I need to start with a prayer. Please join me. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this time together tonight to come to fellowship with you. Please open up our hearts and our minds to this word that we may grow in you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. As you can see, we look at the altar that um, the candles are not lit. There was, there's a reason for that. We didn't forget uh, to do that. And th the theme for tonight is that Jesus is the light of the world. But as you look at the altar and see the candles unlit, that is to remind us what the world is like if God were not here. And what God is, what it's like for someone who doesn't believe in Christ. There's this darkness that can come over the land, over our hearts. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11 says that God put eternity in our hearts, that we know we're going to live forever. We know that. But what we do, we find ways to satisfy that hunger inside to quench the thirst that we may have. Before our text tonight, uh, Jesus was teaching many people when he had fed the 5,000 in chapter 6 of John. And he said, For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And he who believes in me will never be thirsty. There's something about a thirst that we have, a hunger that we have for, for God that we cannot find on our own. We can search for doing all kinds of things in this world to try and make us feel better to find meaning and purpose, to have fulfillment, and it's not going to be there without God in it. And so there is this darkness. See, when we heard the um, first lesson tonight from Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. See, the darkness that scripture is talking about though is not just the absence of light. We know what that's like. We see morning, we see night, we can turn off a switch and we know what that is. But there's a darkness that comes with sin, being lost, lonely, not knowing where to go, not knowing where to find peace. So we can scramble doing all kinds of things to make things right here. But what did Jesus say? Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Seek that first and then all these things will be added to you. Because no matter where we go, what we do, we're not going to find any meaning or purpose in our lives without God there. He is the source and can only be the source for that life and that light. So he said in chapter 8 of John, the Gospel of John, the gospel lesson for tonight. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. It's with that in mind that we light the candles tonight. Because no matter where the darkness is, if it's here, around us, on this world, with sin, there's only one way that there is going to ever be hope and life. 
that's only in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. It can't come in any other way. I know some of you here or some of you online might believe that you're living in some kind of a darkness right now, whether it's financial, it could be with worries about family, friends, relationships. There's something going on. And Jesus came along and said, I am the way, I am the only way. I'm going to give you life and there is no other way to come. And what I would like to do is take a look at some of the little glimpses in the Old Testament that shows us the light that God was bringing to this world. Already in Genesis chapter 3, he provides the way out of sin. Chapter 3, verse 15. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will bruise your head and you will strike his heel. Satan is going to be crushed by the coming light, the Lord Jesus Christ. And every now and then we see the Lord bringing into the Old Testament little evidence of his light and what he was going to do and what he was going to bring to each of us. Now in the story that we look at during the uh, services on Sunday and some of the Bible studies during the week, we had a chance to look at the Old Testament with Adam and Eve, and just go all the way down to Noah, and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to the judges, to the kings, to the exile, and then the return from exile, the building of the temple. And along the way, God showed us his light. The prophecies coming for the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah who was going to come, that light was shining in the darkness more and more and more, giving people more of a glimpse of what he was going to be like. So that when Jesus appeared on the scene, there was not going to be any misunderstanding. He's the one. See, the scripture said that he was going to come and heal the sick, give sight to the blind. that he was going to raise the dead. It also talked about how this Lord himself would be able to bear our sins on the cross. And just looking at just a few of them, I'm not going to look at everything from Isaiah. But as we head towards Palm Sunday and Monday Thursday and Good Friday and Easter Sunday, all these verses come out of the Old Testament that apply to Christ to show us his light and what he was doing. In chapter, verse, in chapter 53 of Isaiah, verse 4, Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our, iniqu for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. And then the promise of his own resurrection, as the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. The light of life. See, that's what Jesus gives us, the light of life. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the resurrection. It's not somewhere outside of him. He is the resurrection itself. And as the scripture promised that he was raised to life, we are all going to be raised to life. And the moment that we breathe our last, we stand before God, looking at him, <laughs> cleanse of our sins, as we are now. And how God looks at each of us right now as if we have not sinned. 
What a light that shines in our heart and our mind right here to have peace. Know that it's not up to me. It's all done by God. He brought me to faith through the Holy Spirit. He sustains that faith. And he walks with me every single day of my life. Every day. He's the one that cleanses me on the way in everything I do. Because even though I've been faith, there is still not one part of the law that I can complete. Not even the tiniest fraction. See, if it were up to us, it would just be hopeless. We couldn't do it. Because the law says to be perfect and righteous. But once we have broken the law, once we have sinned, the law cannot produce the righteousness that it demands. It says you must be righteous. If not, you will die. And then Paul talked in Romans chapter 8 about how this Lord Jesus became our sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature but according to the spirit. We now live according to the spirit. What a relief that's got to be for us. What a sigh of relief. Remember how Peter had sinned against Jesus three times and how he denied Jesus three times? And Luke says that the last time that he denied Jesus, Jesus was looking right at him when he did that. It's amazing. Imagine that. That I sin and Jesus standing right over there. He's looking at me. And how Peter felt afterwards. And when Jesus was before him on that beach, on that shore, all he said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Feed my lambs, feed my sheep. That's all I'm asking. Because Jesus is the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And we know what Jesus said about each of us. That with faith in Christ, we are the light of the world. Wherever we go in this life, we take Jesus with us. There is one moment, no place we can go without him there. And so we pray to God that, Lord, wherever I am, let me be that for you. Let me be your light. Let me live the way that I can't live on my own. Because I want to take that light of Christ and I want to let it shine in everybody. I don't want to see one person I have contact with in this life not know that life. Because we're heading to a great place and it's starting already now. Jesus forgives you for your sins. He forgives me. And he says, you are mine. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. You are always going to be mine, never alone. So even there might be darkness in this world, we come to Jesus. We receive forgiveness. 
We receive restoration. In Isaiah 49, we hear these beautiful words from verse 10. Let him who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. Walk in the light. Don't be in darkness anymore. There are some things that occur in this life that we are not going to fully understand. I can't make sense of many things that have happened. But I know that when those moments occur, it's not time to run from God. It's time to run to him. And to see this Lord who has redeemed us, who is bringing us his light, that we live in that light so there is no more darkness. There is no more despair. If we take hope, but maybe we cannot see any hope. You see this light that Matthew talked about from Isaiah. In chapter 4, verse 15, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea along the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. The shadow of death is everywhere except with those who are in Christ. But Jesus said, you believe in him, we have passed out of judgment into life itself. So when we stand before God on the last day, the great light of Christ is there before us. And his judgment will be, I saw you feed me when I needed to be fed. I saw you clothe me when I needed to be clothed. And we're going to say, Lord, I don't remember that. <laughs> because it's not based upon what I do. It's what Jesus has done. He declares us righteous and takes us into heaven. What a beautiful light that we have in Christ that not just now, but in the eternity itself, we're together with him. And this is just an example of us getting together now, what it's going to be like in heaven. What a beautiful thing that's going to be. Again, that's why we take that light and we want to shine that before other people. What a comfort we have from God in Jesus Christ. It's something that we definitely want to share with others. And in Matthew chapter 12, again we read, this is from Isaiah 42. Here is my servant whom I have chosen, the one I love and whom I delight. I will put my spirits on him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. Another light coming from the Old Testament here about the coming Messiah. He will not quarrel or cry out. No one will hear his voice in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. Till he leads justice to victory, in his name, the nations will put their hope. A bruised reed, he will not break. And a, smol a smoldering wick, he will not snuff out. God does not take our hope away from us. No matter how things look around us, the light of Christ is always going to be there. We're never going to be without him. And Psalm 36, 9 says, In your light, we see light. 
I can't see the truth on my own. But when it seems like there's darkness in God's light, I see that light. And I know Jesus is there for me and he's there for you. And Psalm 142, 7, for he's to set me free from my own prison. Set me free from my own despair, from my own darkness, from my own lack of trust in you, God. Set me free from that. Let me see your light so that I'm always going to be focused on that light and I'm not going to turn from it. It never will. So out of this world of darkness is this light of Christ. And that is how we live our lives. So it's my prayer for all of us that we continue to cling to God and Jesus Christ. We know our sins are forgiven, and that is such a beautiful thing, a wonderful joy to have that we can take with us wherever we go. It's incredible. And may our lives truly be filled with the light of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.